We live in a time of incredible possibilities and tremendous challenges. I'm Turk Pipkin, and while making a film on solutions to global problems, I discovered a collaboration that's changing lives all over the world. I'm talking about the AMD Open Architecture Challenge, connecting architecture and technology with communities in need. The challenge is a partnership between Architecture for Humanity, which brings innovative and sustainable solutions to communities across the globe, and the 50 by 15 initiative, bringing affordable internet access to 50% of the world's population by the year 2015. This year's challenge is in three communities on three different continents. In Nairobi, Kenya, the challenge is to empower the youth of a vast slum settlement by building a technology center, providing education, after-school programs, and job training. In Ecuador, a challenge to use technology and architectural design to connect 22 communities of indigenous chocolate producers in the Amazon rainforest with the global marketplace and each other. And in a remote region of western Nepal, a challenge to build a telemedicine center that will use the internet to connect a quarter million people to doctors around the world. So the idea about the challenge is to give architects around the world the opportunity to respond to great need. We did a call out to community groups, about 108 responded, and we eventually whittled it down to three, and the three facilities were based in Nepal, Ecuador, and in Kenya. Here we are in Nepal, They're probably about as remote as you can get, surrounded by the Himalayan foothills. And in about two weeks, this community will have medical care, which will be remarkable given the mortality rate that uh, this community is affected by, but also by the AIDS pandemic, which is coming into this community. The idea is to build a telemedicine center. It's essentially a small clinic that accesses um, not just hospitals and academic institutions in Nepal and in India, but also around the world. One in seven people live in a slum in the world, and in 15 years, it's gonna be one in three. This is one of the biggest slums in Nairobi. It's a quarter of a million people living in poverty. Sidorak is, is one of the organizations that's trying to change that and trying to change it from within, and it's an extraordinary thing to be able to be with them. They want to be able to take the radio station that they've created and be able to get that on the internet, take a open lot that we're working with, turn it into a place where people can come for education, information, safety, healthcare, and skills. Sidorak is committed to the fact that these kids are a vast untapped resource and that the ability of kids to be able to gain skills, gain access, gain information is absolutely key to their future. And anything they can do to create a sense of opportunity and education for them is an investment in their future. We are uh, just outside of Quito, the capital of Ecuador, and we're in a setting that's one of the potential locations for the chocolate factory that we've been talking about. This is one of the opportunities to purchase uh, a piece of property of about six to seven hectares, uh, which actually abuts one of the major roads that leads from Quito to another relatively large town called Tena. Most people think about charity as a handout. And actually, people don't need help. What they need is just the opportunities that allow them to help themselves. And here is a perfect example, the Kalari Association, a group of indigenous chocolate farmers who live and work in the Amazon. And they want to build a chocolate facility and be connected to a first world market. And that money will allow them to conserve their own land. Quieren visitar ahora la madera fina como fina se está acabando en este sector. We have hardwoods in the rainforest, but when they are cut, they are gone forever. When we grow cacao, the hardwoods remain. Only 10 to 15 percent of each family's land is used for growing crops. The rest remains as it has always been. We can grow an organic product and we preserve the rainforest. Our river is at the head of the Amazon and our lands are great for the production of organic cacao. 
which is grown only in sites with a wide diversity of plants. The new factory will allow us to improve and increase production so that we can export the world's best chocolate and put the profits back into the villages. This is a community that already knows what they want to do with the internet. They, they understand it, they understand the power of it, they know that the faster they get access, the faster that they're going to be able to expand their business, the more money they're going to be able to bring in, and the better lives that they're going to have for those people in those communities. It's a for-profit, non-profit uh, mechanism where they're using the profits in order to protect and conserve their land as well as better the lives of their communities. And this is being done by them and, uh, and for their communities, so this is a self-sustaining model. The whole idea of doing a competition is not to have one solution, but to have many. This project has actually resulted in over 400 different individuals and firms and schools developing for these three communities. The three different sites will all have something when this is over, and we'll have 400 designs in the public domain that people will be able to turn to in a very positive and powerful way. We focus on community structures that many villages or towns don't have the capacity to build. We can do one small thing that could create massive social and economic change. And so the idea is you don't win a prize, but you win the opportunity to change this community. The problems of the world often seem overwhelming, but these are solutions that work. To join the conversation, to be a part of that work, go to 50by15.com. It's time for all of us to meet the challenge.